Hey everybody, it's Stacia Kennedy, the Affiliate Marketing Influencer Podcast. And today I'm so excited to have James Smiley right from Seattle. My, you guys know me. Um, a lot of you guys have been following me since my mentor, you know, up in Seattle, um, Beacon Hill. And so you know how it is in from the hood to million dollar now mini mansion in Austin, in Texas. Tell, tell everybody a little bit about you and how you got started, James. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, thanks for that. That's really cool. Appreciate it. It's always good to know another Seattleite, and uh, I understand a lot of your audience may be from Seattle, so that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I grew up, um, you know, in, in Beacon Hill on uh, 15th and Orcas, um, right across the street from uh, Cleveland High School. Went to um, uh, Rainier Beach Community Center, you know, for all my sports stuff. And, um, so those were like my most impressionable years of school. Also did, um, you know, bounce around some other schools, got kicked out of a few schools, um, ended up in um, uh, graduating from Kentwood. Had to go all the way down to Kent area to uh, make it to a school. So, um, but yeah, so I uh, worked downtown Seattle at the Seattle Car Toys. Um, I think it's on third street down by the key arena did well there was a teenager and didn't know anything. Don't know anything about sales Didn't have a laptop. Wasn't a techie kid. Didn't have hookups. Didn't have social proof. None of that stuff. Kind of all the stuff that people maybe, um, think is like an excuse for them today. Like pretty much everyone starts that way, you know? So it's all pretty much the same, um, in terms of how you start. And so I started working for, company called Nextel at um, 20 years old or somewhere around 20 years old. Um, I was selling blackberries and just hopping with that whole kind of industry and um, ended up doing really well. I got on the email trend when everyone was making phone calls and dialing for dollars. Um, you know, I was sending thousands and thousands of emails um, and uh, you know, this is back when email open rates were like 99%. And so, you know, I could send one email and have my phone ring literally off the, off the hook for two or three months off one email back then. I mean, it was crazy. And you were selling phones with email or how are you, what were you sent, uh, selling through? Email? Yeah. I was, I was selling blackberries and Nextel what? phone service. And <laughs> yeah. And I was selling like, uh, um, I was selling like basically like a business solution. So I got into like understanding like solution selling and like not just selling a phone, but selling like, uh, email, uh, like, a, a personal, like things that we would just consider normal on the device now, but like calendar, email, contact lists. Um, believe it or not, we sell voicemail back then. Wow. So funny. I love <laughs> Nextel back in the day. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. Walkie talkie, <laughs> all that stuff, you know, connected groups, all like we're so it was really big. Like there was an admin portal that was really big. Um, so you kind of have to be like deep. But yeah, so that's kind of how I got started. I um, made my first six figures when I was, you know, around 20 years old, 20, 21. And um, just kind of history from there, you know, um, I got recruited to a Silicon Valley startup called Telenav. We were uh, the first Google Maps. So we were doing Google Maps like eight years before Google came out with it. Um, uh, I left the company a little bit early, but, um, was still a major shareholder in the company. So we IPO that company in my twenties. Um, you know, I was obviously like with every, with all the big shareholders, I was part of the IPO and we just crushed it, just went out there and crushed it. And so kind of since then, um, you know, when you're part of like doing well young and then like IPO and stuff, like I didn't really know what to do, you know? So, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if any, I, 20 year olds really know what IPOs are <laughs> like right. what were, what were some of the, the roadblocks that you overcame uh, early on in your success? I think to be honest, like the biggest um, thing that I noticed young was um, like I had the answers to very big strategic questions. So we'd be in meetings and big meetings, big negotiations going on. Um, and, uh, I wouldn't say anything just cause I wasn't confident. You know, I didn't know 
I didn't know my own inner voice. I didn't know when it was James talking or just the, you know, the, the Coca-Cola talking from an hour ago. So, um, I just would sit around and observe. And then I'd realize two or three meetings later that everyone came to the conclusion that I came to two hours ago or two days ago or two, two meetings ago. And, um, and so that started leading me to say, you know what, when I think of something, I'm just going to say it. And, um, you know, it's funny how, like, when you start learning your voice, you find out, like, you're usually right. Not that you're perfect or anything, but you find out that you're, you're, you're in that meeting for a reason, you know, and you're in that position in life for a reason. And so, um, you know, being able to share um, is – is it's liberating for yourself, but it's also like, if you don't say something, you know, it could be the difference between, you know, a hundred million dollars or, or a hundred dollars. It doesn't matter. Like, you know what I mean? It could be the difference between people, you know, what they're supposed to do and not. So that was one of the biggest, you know, learnings I had young was just kind of learning, um, you know, how to hear myself and how to, you know, you know, that whole thing. And then, um, the other thing that got really big, um, was kind of, you know, after Telenav, I just got into a lot of consulting gigs and business development and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I had a couple of W2 jobs here and there, like, you know, after like consulting for a while, like it ends up being a W2 job a lot of times because they get tired of paying you so much money, <laughs> just to be honest. And so um, they want to have more control. And so, um, but like, um, I think what I really learned was like how to sell systems, you know, and people in consulting, they typically sell um, an idea or a concept. Hey, I'll do this for you, you know, but people don't understand that and they don't generally buy your idea or buy into the idea unless you're Tony Robbins or, you know, some highly like, you know, Oprah or, you know, your highly established thought leader, you're like one of the top five people are not going to spend money on your ideas. They want a system. Mm -hmm. They want a proven system. And so that's kind of what we would put together. And once we had that, um, you know, it was easy to sell. Um, one of the biggest things I learned in life was the art of leverage. So this is what I talk about in the book, not even to promote my book or anything, but, um, by the way, to promote my book, <laughs> the, uh, we, we, I'm so, I'm so shocked. We're like, we outsold Gary Vaynerchuk, Russell Brunson, everybody, Grant Cardone. Like we outsold everybody in like five categories. So props to, you know, all the authors and Steve Larson and uh, Josh and all those guys. They did an awesome job. But uh, Chris O'Byrne was the guy who published the book for us. But anyway, but what I talk about in that book is the art of leverage and how do you use leverage to create income and create influence and, um, so one of the biggest things I could tell you is I learned to stay in the fields the like the businesses, um, I guess uh, the markets, I learned to stay in the markets that had the highest leverage. So when I was really young in my twenties, my early twenties, it was like mobile, mobile technology, just mobile devices, that kind of thing. Then it went into mobile apps. Like everything was mobile software. There was this thing called the mobile first movement. Everybody was talking about mobile first, this and that. Then social came out. And then I realized, I was actually at CES. Uh, I spoke at CES a couple times. And like, um, well, really at the main thing once. But, um, but uh, like, I remember hearing these guys talk about like all the leverage is going to go to social. And so that's where I moved into social. So we started like consulting companies on social and social media and that kind of thing. And, um, and then from there, um, I noticed like, I, I really noticed like in the early 2010, 12, probably like 11, 2011, 2012, that there was going to be this enablement of entrepreneurs, you know, that the entrepreneur, the, and really the solopreneur was going to have, an unprecedented amount of leverage um, because technology and capabilities were going to move their way. And so I was like, man, I better get into that game. And so that's where I, you know, around 2014, I made a big push to, to go to solopreneurs and kind of get out of the B2B space. And um, then, you know, so that's what I do now. And by the way, it's my, my most favorite thing I've ever done because um, 
you know, I used to be just somebody trying to make it right. So, you know, like, um, I'm just really passionate about helping those people and, uh, you know, give them the systems and processes so they can, you know, run their business and have automation and leads and all those kind of things. So speaking of being young and leveraging, it sounds like you put yourself in, in great positions because sometimes it's about, you know, who you hang around with. Can you speak a little bit more about that and, um, and You're how right. you were able to connect? With, I mean, you were obviously able to connect with the right people. I mean, you don't just go to Silicon Valley from Beacon Hill and, yeah. you know. How yeah, so you're, you're right. In fact, I was just talking to my business partner about this this morning. So that's really weird that you bring that up because I haven't talked about this in a while. But um, so like you have to understand, like I was arrested at 16, smoked weed three, four times a day, um, like was a total idiot kid. Right. And um, um, and like uh, I, I don't know. I, I I don't know like where the shift really happened to be honest with you, but I think I started realizing that like I had this realization about the hood. <laughs> I was like 19 and I had this realization that like, like the, mo the most influential thing in my life was music, you know? And I still love like nineties hip hop. I love it, you know? But like when you're a kid, like you believe all that, right? Like you believe it as like the life and the story and the, the struggle and the gangs and the, and the girls and the guns and the drugs and like you believe it you want you want to live like that then as you grow up you realize like i realize maybe some people don't but i real i realize like these are all the things that are holding me back and it, 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 it was it was a love hate thing because i love the culture i love the music i love the people but i was like but at the same time i was like i got to move past this you know i got to like stop wearing the gold chain i got to put a tie on you know what i mean it was stuff like that that like I literally remember there's a guy in Eastern Washington, a really awesome sales rep. And we, we went to some awesome meetings. We crushed it out there and uh, we made a ton of money. And then he took me aside into like a, uh, like a fast food restaurant. And he's like, Hey man, he goes, I gotta tell you something. He goes, do you do you want some feedback? I said, yeah. And I was like 22 or you know 21. And he's like, he's like, lose the chain. Lose the rubber band. He goes, lose the rubber band watch. I had this rubber band watch that you buy. I bought on the beach at Venice beach. Um, he's like, he's like, don't ever walk in with sun sunglasses on. You know, <laughs> you gotta remember man. I'm 21 years old. I think just cause I got a suit on people are impressed, but I'm walking in with sunglasses on gold chain, rubber band watch. <laughs> think about that. I was like, and I was a total idiot. Like, <laughs> but, uh, um, and he was right. Like, um, there were like, you got respect from people quicker. The more you like Tony Robbins talks about like being the chameleon doesn't mean you sell out, but it means like you, you need to be a chameleon. If you want to like, there's an old saying, like a, a, a wise saying that says like, if you want to win a man over, you need to speak his language. And so like, you know, you have to like, if you want to win business people over, you need to speak like them. And so, uh, or, or at least, you know, make them not feel uncomfortable in the first meeting. You know what I mean? You don't want to give them any dumb reason to think, to associate my watch with something that they don't like. And then their, my, my believability goes down. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, and then, and then I, the, the other, so that was like one, it's like, okay, who I'd not hang out with. But the real thing is who do you hang out with? And I specifically, I don't know how I knew that. I honestly don't know how I knew this, but I specifically would go to the most successful people on the floor, on the sales floor, in the office, the CEOs, the executives, the VPs, and I would meet with them. I'd have lunch with them. I'd try to get invited over to their house. Like I was going over to VP, uh, big VPs, you know, guys making millions of dollars. I was going to their home as a young kid learning and man, they, it was surprising how much they were willing to give and, and, and share with me and just teach me about life and sales and business and negotiation. And, you know, um, so yeah, I mean like I got a ton of mentoring, you know, when I was young. Um, but even till today, you know, it's, it's crazy how, um, like there's more and more science actually proving that, um, like what you think about, and what you focus on can become reality to you and you can control your reality. 
And so I was telling my partner and I was telling, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you know, if all you do, I mean, I don't have any problem with like somebody listening to the radio, but like, if all you do is listen to like weird songs of people talking about weird things that have nothing to do with your life and the business and what you want to do, and that is all you put in, then the chances of you being successful is just very, very low because you're not, you're not putting anything good in, right? So you should be listening to the right podcast or the right shows like this or the right YouTube channels like yours, you know, um, courses, all those kind of things. Like you need to get the right stuff in inside your head. Um, and then as you believe it, then, you know, you'll start to see it. So, and that's not some like woo woo thing. I'm just saying like, um, I don't want to go in it just for time, but there's a lot of science that shows like if you scientists never actually, I, I was reading this in a, in a really popular book from a doctor. He was saying like, Science, science did not, they, they, scientists did not know that a neuron existed until they went looking for it. Like, and the fact that they were looking and trying to focus on it and, and focus the, micro, the microscope and try to see it, that's when they found it. But it's been there this whole time for hundreds and hundreds of years and have the technology to see it, but we never saw it because no one looked for it. And so, um, so anyway, yeah, I think like, like, you know, we coach hundreds of students and so like, it's interesting how the people who put in the most into their brain, they, they feed, they sow the most like good seed, they get the most return. You know, J.R. Reeves was just at my house. I don't know if you know him, but um, it was interesting how for a whole week, you know, every dead airspace, he's walking around, earphones in, listening to books, audio books, podcasts. There's no, it's not a coincidence that the kid's like under 25 and makes three or $400,000 a year. It's not a coincidence. Like he puts the right things into his brain. You know what I mean? And so, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm a huge believer. I know we just recently met, but, um, yeah, everybody who knows me, I'm total woo woo. Okay. <laughs> I will take it. Yeah. Cool. You put in totally is, that's what's going to come out. The more that you focus on. You know, if you, if you think about a brown car, you hardly see brown cars. You, you see that now you, once you have it in your mind, you're going to see it every single time. So, um, definitely believe in, in that kind of affirmation, yeah. setting your intention. Like I'm, 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 I'm into the woo woo, but I'm also into the woo woo woo. Like go do something <laughs> like, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm sure you are running too. out of time. Um, and I won't uh, keep you at much longer. Thanks so much for being here. I do want to have you mention though, a little bit about mentor lab because that's, that's really important. I'm a big believer in mentorship and putting yourself around the right people to help you grow your business. How can people find more about you and mentor lab and what you've been up to? Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, um, number one, I appreciate you having me on and the audience and the, everything that you've built here. Um, and that you're building for your future. Um, you know, Mentor Lab was something that, um, it was an idea that I had, just to be completely honest, I had off of Mentor Box. Um, and I thought, well, um, like, is there a way to create a consistent, you know, um, you know, drip of coaching and mentoring to people where um, we can be involved in their lives where we understand what's going on with them. And like when I see them somewhere, I don't just think, you know, Katie Wells or, you know, one of the people like Raj or these people in our group, I don't just see them and go, Hey, like, I know what they're doing. I know where their business has been. I like, I know about them. And it's, it's interesting how like, you know, you can join a coaching program and pay 20,000, 30,000, $50,000 and the, the key people have no idea who you are. If they saw you in a crowd, they would not know who you are. If, and if they did, they would definitely not know anything about your business, you know? And I think that, um, like there is a need for coaching that is more like about the group and the community and all that stuff. I get that. But most entrepreneurs, most solopreneurs, before you get to the networking stage, you need to like build your own stuff and you need somebody who can see it, who can understand where the weaknesses are. Um, so that's kind of, you know, what we did there. And we just said like, we wanted to completely over deliver 
and um, be very, very disruptive within the coaching industry. So like I've had a lot of people say, you can't give out this much information. You can't do 50 coaching sessions a year with people. You can't meet with them for, you know, once a week for that price. Like you're totally undercutting us. You're undercutting the market. And um, so that's what we wanted to do. And we did it on purpose, you know, as we, we wanted to help as many people as possible. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're like, like there's like four $2,000 courses that we give away, give away in the program. You know what I mean? Um, and a new thing we just launched the other day was uh, we, we, we cut a big deal with Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. And so Kevin Harrington is going to do 10 mentoring sessions for free into the group. Um, he's going to speak at our annual conference, which is in Nashville, uh, a day before Funnel Hacking Live. Last year we had 250 people at our, at our uh, event. Um, this year it should be bigger. And, um, you know, people, are, like people in our community are going to win. There's three people who are going to win a three-hour one-on-one consultation with me and Kevin Harrington. And so we're trying to just, you know, not just be there for people, um, like, like being there for them week by week is, is, is the most life changing piece. It's like a relationship or it's like a friendship. You know what I mean? Like you need somebody who's consistently there all the time and understands you and has, has that, that, that growth and that, um, you know, like remembers what it was like when you first started or, you know, and, um, so you need that. But I think also like being able to leverage my best relationships, my best business relationships and, you know, seeing what, what other entrepreneurs can do with those relationships, what deals they can cut is even, even, even more awesome. So, Definitely. yeah. Awesome. Rolodex, a lot of benefits. Oh my gosh. To really like catapult you, um, you want quick results. It's, that's the only way to do it. Surround yourself with people who've been there. All right. Yeah. So where can they go to find more? Mentorlab.com? It's mymentorlab.com. Mymentorlab.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Any, any last words that you have to share with our influencers, affiliate marketing, people who are, are you know, <laughs> working their way up? Yeah. Well, number one, I would say this. Um, as you As you grow – the first thing you want to do is understand the math of what you're doing. Okay. That's the first thing we teach people is do the math. Okay. If you don't understand the math, then chances are you're not going to do anything. And I don't know why that is, but it is the truth. This is, you know, the, the 95% of online entrepreneurs who fail, it's because they're, they're all the people who didn't do the math. You know, the people who succeed, they did the math. And there's a lot of other reasons why they succeed. But um, doing the math means if I want to make $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, do I have any concept mathematically of how to do that? The worst thing you can do is say, I want to go sell my soap or I want to go be an affiliate marketer. Or I want to go be whatever and have no concept of how to make money in that, you know. Um, and then you th your thought is, well, you know, I'll just do it. I'll serve and I'll just be nice to everyone. And then all the money will come to me. And I'm telling you, it doesn't happen that way. I'm not saying don't sow seeds. I'm not saying don't, don't, um, be nice to people. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that like, like, I can't tell you how many people come into some of our coaching and they're like, man, I need to make money in the next two weeks. I'm like, cool. That's not that hard. Let's figure that out. And they go, okay, I'm going to be an affiliate marketer. And I go, no, you're not they're like, what? And no, you will not get paid in two weeks being an affiliate marketer. You literally don't understand the industry. Yeah. You know, so like you'd be better off going to like, you know, walking around your, your, your neighborhoods and like asking them, you know, how, how can I volunteer to, you right. know, make 50 bucks? Yeah. Cash make, is king. I always tell people that you still got to bring in the money, affiliate marketing. You're not going to get paid for another 30, 45 days. So yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, um, and even then, like, like it might take you 90 days to build up a really good income. And then you might not see that until, you know, another month or two after that. Right. And so, 
like it takes a little bit of time. It's worth the effort if you, especially if you can make it happen. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's surprising to me. Um, like somebody says, you know, the magic number, 80% of people I talk to on the phone who are trying to get into coaching or whatever, they say they want to be and make a, make a million dollars in the next year. I don't know why everyone says that. And so I ask them, I go, do you know what a one percenter in the whole world, do you know what a one percenter makes? They, uh, the funniest one I ever got, there was somebody who told me it was billions with a B, billions of dollars. I said, a one percenter makes billions? Like, yeah. And um, I said, no, one percenter, look it up, makes $412,000 a year. Okay. So like, you know, there, there's this concept that people have of like, you know, everyone must be a millionaire. There's a stat out there. Like there's a thousand new millionaires a day. There is. But if you do the math on it, okay. A thousand new millionaires a day across the globe is not actually incrementally increasing the number of overall influ or, or uh, millionaires. That, that's like the average, no, that's like the average run rate. And so, um, like you have to understand also there's, there's millionaires who are not millionaires who were last year and who are not. And so, um, I think, I think statistically there is a slight increase statistically. Uh, there is a, you know, maybe like a, it's like a 1% increase. I don't even think it's 1% to be honest with you, but there are a very small increase in the number of overall millionaires in the world's population. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize is more than half of those people are not in the U S by the way. Okay. So, I just want to bring a reality check to what you're saying. Like, like ma making, going from making $2,000 a month to 20,000 will completely change your life. Like every aspect of your life. I, I'm not saying this to be rude, but it will change your friends. It will change where you eat. It will change where you shop. It'll change everything about you. Okay. Cause you'll move somewhere different. Like, it, like it'll change everything. Um, and then if you went from, from 20,000 to making 80,000 a month, you know, or a hundred thousand a month, that again will completely change your life. Um, but, but you know, like you have to understand, like if you're going to, if you want to be a top earner for whatever reason, hopefully you want to do it for the right reason to help the world and stuff like that. Um, but like, if you want to be a top earner, um, I would encourage you to figure out how to make a hundred thousand before you make a million, because you will never hit a million if you can't hit a hundred thousand. You see what I'm saying? And like, so I'm not saying don't have the million dollar goal. I'm just saying like, I ask people, I'm like, have you ever made a hundred, a hundred grand in a year? You ever done that by yourself? Uh, no. How much have you made? 40. Okay. Well, let's start with a hundred. Do that as fast as we can. Let's set that goal. Set a plan to get there. And then let's figure out how to get to a million. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, it's very important about those numbers. And once you yeah. have those numbers in sight, it's less like a million dollars, even if it's, it still seems, even if you say it confidently, <laughs> no matter how you say it, it's still far off if you've only made 40,000 in a year. So you're right. You're right. And so it like, uh, if somebody wants to make a hundred grand, they need to think about, okay, let's say, well, you know, I've had people come to my coaching and they sell $37 products. And I'm like, okay, what do you want to make a year? And they go, a million. I go, that ain't happening. Not with a $37 product unless, unless you've got, you know, 200 grand in ad spend or, you know, you've got a huge audience or um, chances of that, have, that's extremely unlikely to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I, I mean. Kind of upsells, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like, unless you have, like, the pet rock. You know what I mean? Like, you could have, like, the one in a million, like, products. And, and, I, and we can figure that out like pretty quick, but like if you're just selling like coaching for $37 a month group coaching and you think you're going to make a million dollars off that, that's not happening. Like, um, but what would be more likely is to say, okay, how do I sell? Um, like you'd be surprised, I, I, you know, how, how, how could you sell a $50,000 package or a $30,000 package and then do the math on how many of those you need to hit a, to hit a hundred grand, how many of those you need to hit a million now that becomes more doable when you do the math, you set your sights on let's say a $30,000 package. Then the next thing you need to think about, I mean, this is a system by the way. Remember I said, not just an idea, let's be a millionaire, but it's a system. So like, what do I need to do to add enough value to somebody that they will gladly pay me $30,000? Like they won't even think about it. 
Okay. And, and once you figure that out, now you're rolling because now you're like, you know, that, that, and that could be, don't, don't eliminate anything. Okay. That could be like, they want to come over to your house and walk your dog every morning with you and talk strategy. Like there's people who will pay weird stuff like that. Okay. Um, you know, they want to fly into your town three times a year and spend three days of time, um, going over, you know, uh, the setup, the launch and scale, something like that. Right. Like, like you gotta, so, you know, you really gotta think about the, 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 the system from there that you're going to deliver. But, um, and if you don't know how to do stuff, you might be going, well, I don't know how to build a funnel. I don't know how to do an ad. I don't know how to do sales copy. There's people out there that do remember, think leverage. Don't think everything yourself, right? Leverage is like, how do I move a hundred pound rock? Number one, don't push it. Go get something to <laughs> move that thing. Right. Like that's Not some of y'all are, how, it's the who, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some of you, y'all are like pushing that damn rock and wonder why it's so hard. You need to go find uh, some leverage, you know, get a little teeny pebble the size of my fist and put a, put a stick next to it. And that thing will move with barely any pressure. Like, you know what I mean? You, you don't think about that. So you might have, you might take in $30,000. You might have to pay out 10 or 15 grand to get the absolute top notch funnel builder and ad person to work with you. But now you've got a $30,000 product that you're selling. And mm -hmm. by the way, you're hardly doing anything. See what I'm saying? So that's like leveraging other people, but it's also leveraging your time because now like you can sell a $30,000 product and you're not spending two weeks building it. Awesome. Love it. Just drop in the mic here, guys. Thank you so much, James. Man, I know you got to run. We'll have to do another one because I could talk about this stuff all day, guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, make sure to comment below or reach out and I'll send you um, James information too in the um, notes, the show notes. But thanks again, James. And we thanks got a lot, Stacia. Thanks so much. Much love Appreciate and aloha. You. Appreciate you guys. Aloha. See ya.